This is Wayne from My Tech News, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Animal Crossing New Horizons game from Nintendo. Now, I've been playing this game for about seven days now, and I really got my feet wet with this game, and I pretty much know all the little ins and outs of this game, or at least enough of this game to really understand the main concept of this game, and I actually understand this game. Before I go ahead and show you around my island, I want to talk a little bit about new horizons just before that also i do want to say in this video i'm going to try to keep spoilers down to a, a minimum i'm not really going to go into any place that you have to like build or do over time i'm just going to show you maybe my house and maybe the way my island uh, actually looks but if you're unfamiliar with animal crossing animal crossing is a life simulator so if you ever play games like the sims harvest moon stardew valley my time at Portia, then you'll really feel at home with the, uh, Animal Crossing. And Animal Crossing, I would actually say, is actually much more closer to things like Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon than it is to something like The Sims. But Sims is still kind of correct, just because that also is a life simulator. But unlike other life sims on the market, this one does play kind of different to other ones, just because this one does run on a real-time clock. So for instance, if it's morning time and it, where you're at, it's going to be morning time in the game. If it's nighttime where you're at, it's going to be nighttime in the game as well. And then also on that, everything that you have to build in the game does run on real time. So that means if you want to construct something, you'll have to wait one real life day to actually build it. So if I put something up today, I won't get it built until like tomorrow or even the next day, depending on how long it takes to actually build something in the game, which is actually very interesting. So you can see this game is a game that does run on real time. And I guess right now I'm going to go ahead and go into my island and then I'm going to keep talking about New Horizons because they did actually add quite a lot of few things to uh, New Horizons to actually make it a pretty good game. And honestly, what do I think of this game right now if I was to actually rank this game or talk about this game? Honestly, I would say without a doubt, this game is definitely easily the best Animal Crossing game that uh, Nintendo actually made, not just because of the graphics or anything like that. They actually added a lot of quality of life improvements to this game that really makes this game stand out from other Animal Crossing games. And honestly, if you played this game, I would probably say there's no reason to play the other Animal Crossing games unless you wanted to play them for like nostalgic purposes and things like that. Flat out, this is the best one. Of course, the graphics of the game have been improved. This is the first home console version of Animal Crossing and this one does play in HD and I, what I can say is first of all the graphics of this game look phenomenal I'm definitely blown away they're not anything too crazy but they do look extremely nice for some reason I don't know why my uh Volting, vaulting pole or whatever it's called is actually clipping through my hat. If you see that right there on the actual uh, video, you can see it, it is uh, cutting through my hat, which is kind of like a little glitch. I don't know uh, why that is, but yeah, the graphics look really great in this game. I would personally say that this is one of my, my favorite looking Nintendo Switch games because this game definitely... The cartoony vibe of this game definitely makes this game look crispy, looks nice. Overall, it is a very nice game to actually look at, and I'm actually very happy with the graphics of this game. Definitely best looking uh, Switch game to date, in my opinion. And then outside of that, I really do love all the little quality of life improvements Nintendo added to this game to make it the best Animal Crossing game. It's not a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination. I do have some pretty small complaints, but they're little nitpicky things. But the main reason why this is so good good is like I said the quality of life improvements one of the biggest things that people always had a problem with when it comes to Animal Crossing specifically a lot of people kept ask a lot of people kept asking the question in the past with Animal Crossing what do you do with Animal Crossing I don't understand Animal Crossing Animal Crossing is pointless that is true to some extent since Animal Crossing is one game I do know for a factor that doesn't really have any like true true in game or there's really no story to progress you through the game it's pretty much do whatever you want and you got to try to make your own fun if that makes sense you may not understand if you never played animal crossing but that's pretty much how animal crossing works and nintendo with this version of animal crossing pretty much uh fixed all the complaints a lot of people had with Animal Crossings of past. The biggest improvement they did to Animal Crossing is definitely giving you goals to work towards. And these goals that you work towards are going to be called 
uh, nook miles they're kind of like objectives or quests in the game they're nothing too crazy and actually if you played a past animal crossing game this animal crossing game is not going to change your uh, opinion on animal crossing just because well you're doing the same monotonous tasks that you'd be doing uh, in other animal crossing games at least they do give you a goal to work toward you can see for here you have pop balloons catch a tiger beetle complete diy projects customize items spend bells to buy items and then you also got punch outs here that tell you like you need 50 uh you need 50 flowers planted and we'll give you a nook miles so that so it's called nook miles and after you do all these objectives after you do complete these objectives you get nook miles and let me go ahead and move my camera uh to a different spot so you can actually see what the nook miles look like or how many i have you can see on the top right hand side of the screen i do have nook miles i have 730 nook nook miles to actually spend and after you get these nook miles you can actually uh redeem them for stuff in the game like items and actually visiting other islands in the game and that's pretty much all you can do with nook miles but just the fact they have nook miles to keep you going is absolutely uh, fantastic it kind of gives this game more replayability more things to do if you don't know what to do and you're always bored you can try to complete these nook miles and the nice thing about these nook miles that they added to the game is they always rotate no matter what so if you complete every single nook mile up here it'll just keep re rotating so you never run out of nook miles if you're playing as long as you want so basically basically this game is going to be nice for people who want to binge if you want to binge this game you can actually binge this game for like six to seven hours at a time because of the nook miles i can see where this game really does start to get very addicting if you just want to try to complete all these little tasks in the game which is actually kind of nice they actually did this to try to solve the problem of what to do in animal crossing trying to give this game a little bit more objectives to do in the game that's actually very nice and that's the biggest Im Im improvement here to the uh, animal crossing uh, formula another big key difference between this and other animal crossings is the fact that they did add crafting to this game and they did actually add uh break breakable items in this game like your standard uh items break like your uh fishing rod, your net, your shovel, your axe, they all do break over time. There is different durabilities or different types of axes, fishing rods, and nets you can actually build to be a little bit more stronger. I'm actually really a big fan of the changes they actually did in this game specifically. I love the breaking weapons and I actually do love the crafting and I'm going to explain why. Basically, the reason I love the breaking weapons and even Nintendo actually talked about it in an interview recently they actually said why they they made breakable weapons the main reason they made breakable items not weapons but breakable items is due to the fact that they really wanted to make sure players would have something to do so for instance if your items break in the game you can just go to a crafting table and actually craft new ones so it get, makes this game a little bit less boring and the nice thing about the, the breakable weapons i don't are breakable items i keep wanting to call them weapons but items your, your main items, I feel like, don't break all that often, even if you have, like, the regular ones. And if you ever do feel like they break too often, which I don't think they break too often, you can always make stronger ones uh, or different types of them to for them to actually uh, last longer. And then on top of that, we do have a crafting, like I said. And the nice thing about crafting here, let's go ahead and go into crafting. The nice thing about crafting is crafting is very simple in this game. When I first heard about crafting in the brand new Animal Crossing, I was like huh that's gonna kind of scare me away potentially because i know in some other video games i don't like the crafting mechanics i don't like how they work or maybe they're too complicated it's not really too clear on how to do stuff but this game's crafting is very simple again it makes sense because kids are going to be playing this game you can see for the uh, flimsy axe you have tree branches you need to collect and stone you need to collect and I love the fact they're just very simple I'm not gonna really tell you where to get them that'll be for you to discover but then they also start getting a little bit more complicated and just trying to find materials for that specific uh, item like for instance if I go to the best axe you can build or I can build right now I go to this axe and then you can see with this axe alone I do need the flimsy axe so I have to completely make a flimsy axe and then add it to this axe plus extra material you can see where it gets a little bit more complicated and they start getting way more complicated than that as well I haven't got that far yet and uh, 
But yeah, I just love the crafting aspect of this game. I can literally sit here for hours on end and craft a whole bunch of different things. And you do unlock different crafting recipes over time. So not everybody's going to have the same crafting recipe since, like I said, you do unlock crafting recipes over time. I don't know how many uh, recipes are there in the game, but I'm assuming there is a lot of recipes that you can unlock over time and it does get very full of recipes you can see all the little different things that i actually uh, have in this game and that's pretty much it i think for new stuff that they added to this game outside of of course the multiplayer stuff they did they did work on the multiplayer stuff but one big thing that this game does really well without a doubt is the fact that this game really does feel like this is your own island because when you first start this game there is a couple things like set like i think nooks i think nooks resources is set in place but i just love the customization with this uh animal crossing the customization is definitely uh, through the roof if you love customization they let you pick your own island when you first start the game they let you customize different items in the game they let you to decide where all your villagers are going to live. They let you pick the placements of all the shops in the game and all the buildings in the game. I'm just really a big fan of how this game really does feel like an a accomplishment if you ever do play this game. It really does feel like you're building up to a bigger goal and at the end you're going to have an island that you actually created yourself and not Nintendo created when they first developed the game and that's something I'm a really big fan of. And of course later on you will get things like terraforming where you can actually like chop up some of the land here if you want to like fix the land which I actually don't have unlocked now since it's going to take a long time for me to actually unlock that but you can start customizing your island to 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 a very uh, high uh, level if you want to start doing that which is actually very nice so everything is pretty much customizable and I also love the fact when you play this game not everybody's going to have the same experience and the reason I love that is because if I talk to my friend he might have different experiences he might have different items a different placements for all of his shops, different villagers, different items, uh, uh, different uh, different clothing pieces for his villager. Overall, there's just so many different things in this game that you'll get different experiences from different people. And the nice thing about this game, you can't entirely unlock everything right when you get the game. This game builds up over time. Whether I play this a week from now or whether I play this a year from now, I may still not have everything unlocked in the game just because this game is a very massive game. Now, one thing this game doesn't do too well, uh, talking about the multiplayer they added, the multiplayer is actually kind of clunky in this game. First off, they have two different types of multiplayers in this game. They have a local multiplayer where you can actually connect multiple switches. They also have local multiplayer where you can play with, uh, I think, up to eight players on the same Nintendo Switch, or at least a couple people on the same Nintendo Switch with multiple controllers. That one is actually kind of gimped in a way, and that one's not too good because the owner who plays the game gets all the rights, and then the people who play on your Nintendo Switch while they're playing with you in real time. Like if I have another person sitting beside me playing with their controller, playing on, on my screen and they're moving around with me, they do get limitations, which does suck, unfortunately. And then on top of that, also uh, the biggest drawback to this game is, you know how the Nintendo Switch or most consoles have multiple profiles you can make on the system. The biggest limitation is if you do that, like if I go back to my home screen and I switch profiles to play Animal Crossing, they can't have their own island. They have to use my island and that's very bad because of course, you know you'll have a family member who will make their own account, make their own villager. The nice thing is they don't use your villager. They do make their own villager and they do get their own house if they have their own Nintendo Switch profile and they're playing on your Nintendo Switch. But even so, that is kind of annoying how they can damage everything in your village, chop down trees, destroy your house, move everything around. That's just something I'm not really a big fan of. And then uh, online multiplayer is also kind of messed up. You can have up to eight players, which sounds nice. But if you're trying to get everyone in all at one time, it can be very frustrating. i seen where if you try to get eight players back to back in one island, it can take anywhere around... 20 minutes to get everybody loaded in because there is a really bad loading screen that pops up every time someone joins your island especially if they're doing it in very fast uh if they're, if they're coming one after another basically basically and that can be very frustrating and annoying to have to sit there for 20 minutes loading everybody in to an eight player online session especially like i said if they're if they're uh, going uh 
if they're coming to your island. And yeah, those aren't great, but at least it's nice. They do give you those options. And then another thing they did add to this game, which I forgot to mention up to this point is another big thing that's so amazing with this game is unlike other Animal Crossing games is you can drop anything anywhere. Let me go to my inventory and just drop this rock. But anything in this game is droppable like literally anywhere in the game, which is absolutely insane. So you can see where people are start are going to start getting a are going to start getting a trashy with the game and somebody can make their island really trashy, but that does bring up the uh, customization in this game to new heights, just the fact you can place anything anywhere. There is actually one limitation to the actual dropping items anywhere. The dropping items can't be placed on uh, Nook's resources, unfortunately. If I go here and I try to drop this flower, it'll say, sorry, you can't put anything in the plaza. But besides the plaza, anything is a go in this game. And I'm actually very glad about that because this game overall feels definitely way less repetitive than other Animal Crossing games. Not to say that this game won't get repetitive because I can definitely say that this game is one of the most repetitive games you'll ever play in your life because you're doing monotonous tasks like fishing all day, chopping wood, placing items around, talking to villagers, going to different shops to sell. Overall, it can get very repetitive. Honestly, even though this game is very accessible to a lot of people, and I do think this is the best one to jump into, and it's very easy to understand for so many people, I just think this game's not for everybody since it is a very slow and boring game, and be ready for the reputation to set in on this game, and that's something I'm just not really a... Uh, well, I guess I'm not I'm not saying I'm not a big fan of it, but just be warned about that. I know that it's not really boring depending on who you ask. It just depends on what type of mindset you're in. But the nice thing about Animal Crossing is the fact that you can play this for six to seven hours at a time, or you can play this for like 10 minutes and then come back in like four to five hours, play 10 minutes, come back throughout your day and things like that. So it's not really going to get that boring, especially if you don't binge this game and you just want to play it for a little bit, check in, do some tasks like sell some items, go fishing, move some stuff around your island. You are going to be good to go uh, in that aspect when it comes to uh, Animal Crossing. And let me go ahead and show you around my island since I haven't actually talked about my island up to this point. So you can see I do have cherries for my uh, starting... Uh, starting fruit just like any other animal crossing game that is going to be random when you start your island what what uh fruit you get i got cherries which is disappointing to me because i had cherries in the last game new leaf which is unfortunate i have some of the shops already going or at least one shop i do have the museum fully up and functional the final form i do believe there it is right there i have the museum I also have uh, Nook's Cranny, and I do have a bridge in place right here, so I don't have to use my vaulting pole. There's my bridge right there. There is uh, Nook's Cranny right there. I'm not going to go into any of the shops if you haven't played the game, which uh, I don't want to really spoil anything. I will show you my house, though. There's my... Uh, family member's house like i said if you do play on the same switch within their profile they do get their own uh, their own villager with their own own house as well so there it is right there here's one of my villagers i got sly and phoebe for my first villagers i have some more on my island but i can't remember their names because there was a lot of uh <laughs> a lot of villagers and you can see he remembered the name of my uh my uh family members uh villager their name is teeny uh, yeah teeny i think which is actually interesting and then here's my house right here i do have a fence out with some flowers and then i do have a hammock right there and of course we just have stuff laying all over the island which is making my island look trashy but i'm not really paying attention to that too much just because i'm really waiting until i advance the game much more farther until i can actually do stuff uh with the game until i really feel like i want to start customizing but i will go into my house and actually show you uh, what my house actually looks like, but here's what my house actually looks like up to this point I just have things scattered around the room. I have a candle. I have a changing room I have an espresso machine a lamp a xylophone looking thing a snow globe a, a mirror a, a Ironing board a bucket a Nintendo switch nothing too crazy actually when I first started this game like four or five days ago, I really did have my house much more trashier, but I decided to pick up stuff just to have more more room because you do end up running out of room really fast in your uh, storage or in your pocket. I'm just not really a big fan of that. I don't know if you can upgrade it any farther than what I currently have, but 
yeah, there it is. The nice thing I love about this game as well is every time you check back to this game, you never know what new item or what new thing that's going to be added to your vi village. That's something that makes me excited to want to play this game every day, even if it's only for like 10 to 15 minutes at a time, because you never know what's new in this game. And it always feels like they're always adding new elements uh, to this game day in and day out, which is nice. There are some days, of course, where if you didn't do anything in the game, it won't really add anything to the game because there is certain things you have to do in the game which I'm not going to explain to get certain things unlocked which is kind of unfortunate because I can see some people out there never even unlocking certain things in the game just due to the fact that it's not really 100% explained how to actually get some of the shops get some villagers in and things like that you can totally go and just play this game the way it is and honestly never unlock half the stuff this game has to offer since you may not really understand it but overall hopefully when you play this game you'll understand how this game works and you'll really want to unlock uh, everything in the game when it uh, comes to the to this game and this is the best game as well too if you want a game that really even though it doesn't have a true ending and there's really no purpose of this game it's pretty much just live your life and do whatever you want you really do have feel a sense of accomplishment by always doing stuff on your island always getting things unlocked and things like that and you can play this game for as long as you want or not as long as you want and you can feel like you've beaten the game or you've done everything you wanted to do and it's always a good game to buy as well because this is a kind of game where even though you get bored of it really quickly and you may not come come back to it you can always boot this up in the in the in the foreseeable future and then you can always just like this is a good game to just i feel like mess around with and this is a game to just sit down and play for just a little while no matter what in this game honestly i feel like for a lot of people will just never get bored especially if you haven't come back to it but honestly i also don't think that's the right way to play this game most people are probably going to tell you this is a game that you really need to play almost every single day to really get the real true experience out of this game since it's kind of weird to come back to this game if you haven't played this game for uh, a long time because you will be missing stuff villagers will, will miss you it just honestly just doesn't make sense Okay, there's one of my other villagers. I have another villager called uh, Twiggy. Let's go ahead and actually uh, talk to Twiggy. Because I have something. To... Oh, see, that's why it's worth talking to villagers. Some people don't talk to the villagers, but sometimes they give you stuff. And I never got this before, so that's interesting in real time. You're actually seeing me get a brand new item from uh, Twiggy. And I actually think that's kind of cool. So it is always worth it to at least try to talk to your villagers once a day when you actually boot up the game. Because you never know what they're going to have to say, whether it's funny dialogue or whether it's... Uh, a gift and you should always talk to your villagers at least like twice when you talk to them because they do uh, switch the dialogue up so you might want to try to talk to them a little bit just to try to see what else they have to say now the question is before I head out of this video is this game actually worth uh, $60 I think if you played other life simulator games like Stardew Valley or The Sims, etc. I think this game may be worth checking out. Of course, it will depend on what you're looking to get out of a life simulator since almost every life simulator is slightly different in the mechanics. Honestly, I'm personally a big fan of this over things like uh, Stardew Valley or The Sims. I'm not really going to get into that now. It would take too long, but yeah, I'm definitely more of a bigger fan of this now that I actually understand this game. If you haven't played a life sim, you may want to try this game out. But again, I don't think this game's for everybody since this game is uh, very repetitive in nature. You're doing the same things day in, day out. And some people may not like doing stuff you can do in real life. It may be boring to them, and I understand that as well. But I think this game appeals to almost everybody, and everybody can get into this game. It just depends on what you're looking to get out of a video game as well, especially since this game has no... Uh, true ending and no real goals to really work towards pretty much do whatever you ever you want uh in this game now do i think this is worth 60 myself now that i actually have this game honestly i actually think for myself i am actually going to get 60 dollars worth of content out of this game because i absolutely love this game and the amount of hours i've already put in this game already succeeded the, the amount that I paid for this game. Honestly, I know this sounds really crazy, but I would be willing to pay at least like 80 or $70 for this game because this game has a lot of content to offer, and this is a game that I'm easily going to put a couple of hundred hours in when it's all said and done. I just love everything about this game. This is a, just a good game to chill and relax to. And another thing to take note, if you are buying this game, I would highly, highly recommend buying this game digitally instead of physically since you're going to be playing this game all the time. You're going 
going to be checking into this game quite frequently, and you may not want to lose the cartridge to this game. So I would personally buy this game digitally if I had a chance to buy this game digital just to have it on my Nintendo Switch all the time, and I won't have to worry about losing it. And especially since the Nintendo Switch is a hybrid console with a hybrid concept, it really makes sense that you're going to be moving your Switch around a lot. For some people, it makes sense to actually have this uh, digital yeah, digital. The only thing I can see you buying physical for this game is if you have a lot of family members and you want to share the same copy of the game and they have their own Switches, then that actually makes sense to buy physical. But I think for most people, this is a, a very big time investment and a very big game that you're going to be playing for a long time. You definitely need to go get uh, physical uh uh, digital for this game and outside of that I think I'm gonna I'm think I'm gonna wrap up this video definitely two thumbs up from me I'm definitely very happy with the direction that Nintendo added to Animal Crossing if there was some things to nitpick about since I didn't talk about my negatives of this game up to this point there is some really bizarre choices like for instance when you craft you can't craft multiple items at the same time like for instance if I want to have like four or five uh nets on me and I want to craft them to stock in my inventory so I don't have to go back to the uh, crafting table. Unfortunately, I do have to make them one after another, which can get kind of annoying because you see the same animation and it's kind of slow. Why can't you just build like five nets all in a row if you have all the material? That doesn't make sense. And I wish in your inventory, some things would actually stack. Like why doesn't the fishing rod just stack? Because for me personally, it is getting kind of annoying that I have to drop stuff around the island or go back to my house to just drop stuff just because my inventory is running out. Sometimes I binge this thing or I don't want to go back to my house. I don't want to drop things around because it looks messy. I just want a perfect inventory and it sucks you can't stack everything some things if i take my uh controller and actually move it around my inventory i can stack them but some stuff aren't stackable like for instance if i take this fishing rod and try to stack it on another fishing rod it just won't stack on another fishing rod it should allow you to actually stack on another fishing rod or better yet i wish nintendo would make it to where all your normal items like your fishing rod your shovel your net your axe wouldn't be considered part of your inventory i know i know that you're carrying them around so they want to make it feel like it's part of you of course it makes sense but i wish they weren't part of you because they take up inventory space since they're items you have to use all the time anyway those are just some really nitpicky things same thing with going to brand new islands in this game that is a feature i haven't talked about but you can visit random islands that are randomly generated uh that the game has and for some reason you have to keep going back to the airport in your uh, town to actually go to another island if you stocked up on Nook tickets and why can't you just go from island to island right when you're done with the island why can't you talk to the guy instead of him flying back to your airport why can't he have you fly to another uh, another island so you can just keep going from island to island without having to uh, waste time going back to, to your island and then talk to him again and then um, have him fly to another island that just kind of a uh, breaks up the pace of the game and that's kind of a, a quality of life thing. I have a feeling that maybe some of these things that I'm nitpicking, which a lot of people have these complaints as well, Nintendo may actually update in the near future. I can see that. Maybe they just ran out of time and they couldn't really add these to the game because they wanted to focus on bigger things that were actually more important to the game's development and that does make sense if they had to make more things more important that i'll be okay with these little things not being in the game but i hope over time they actually add that and this is a game obviously that's probably going to be updated over time and more and more things are going to be added to this game so it's always nice to check back uh in this game months from now you'll see new things not only are you going to be unlocking them but nintendo's going to be adding a lot to this game overall i'm just very happy with this game and that's about it for this game i'm going to go ahead and head out of, of this video anyway guys this is wayne from my tech news signing out